Hi, I'm Kenny Yates. Welcome to Hold the Hope. This is our regular weekly message. And every week we try to bring you an encouraging message to show the importance of knowing Jesus and the importance of holding on to Him. And this week is no different. We, we want to bring you an encouraging message, a message to show that the real importance of knowing who Jesus is. And today, our message is entitled, Who do men say that I am? And our scripture is found in Matthew chapter 16, verse 13 through 20. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? So they said, Some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Bar-Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. Jesus was passing through the region of Caesarea Philippi with his disciples. Now, Caesarea Philippi was like the center of Baal worship. It lay at the foothills of Mount Hermon, a place of long history. From the very beginning, this area was known as the gateway to the spiritual world. And it seems like false gods and false god worship and sexual immorality struggled with goodness and with blessing right there in that area. According to the books of Enoch and Jubilee, Mount Hermon is, is the place where 200 watchers descended to the earth and and they married women. They, they slept with, with, with earthly women. And they had children by them. And in the time of Moses and Joshua, this area was known for Baal worship. Like in Joshua chapter 11, verse 16 and 17 says, So Joshua took all that land, the hill country and all the Negev, and all the land of Goshen and, uh, and the lowland and the Arabah and the hill country of Israel and its lowland, from Mount Halak, which, which rises towards um, Seir, as far as Baal Gad in the valley of Lebanon below Mount Hermon. And he captured all their kings and struck them and put them to death. Also in Joshua chapter 12 verse 1 says, Now these are the kings of the land whom the people of Israel defeated and took possession of their land beyond the Jordan towards the sunrise from the valley of the Arnon to Mount Hermon and all the Arabah eastward. At the time of the Greeks, this area was known for Pan worship. And apparently the people did detestable things in their, their, their worship, their pursuit of worship and pan. They, they had religious prostitution and some of them even had sex with goats in pan's honor. Apparently they believed that the gods would go into the underworld for the winter through the caves that were in that area and then that they would emerge again during the spring. Well it just so happened that Jesus and his disciples were passing through that area during the spring. Jesus' death was close at hand and just a little while he would die a horrific death to pay the sins or for the sins of the whole world. The whole world, the sins of the whole world would be laid upon him in just a little bit. And you know what? We live in a world where any religion is more acceptable than Christianity. Sexual immorality is rampant and the deep state is trying its best to legalize and and, and, and uh, normalize pedophilia. The, the signs of the time indicate that Jesus' return is close at hand. Jesus is still asking the question, who do men say that I am? You have to make a choice. 
You have to declare who Jesus is. And you have to make a stand in these last and final days. I want you to take special note at verse number 13. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Whom do people say that I, the Son of Man, am? Jesus did not just say, who do they think I am? But he gave his disciples the answer of who he, he, he was. Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? See, Jesus was not confused about his identity. He was not trying to find out who he was. He knew who he was. He was and is the son of the living God. Amen. Praise the Lord. He just needed his disciples to be fully sure about that statement as well. They needed to come to the conclusion. They needed to accept who Jesus was, who Jesus is, and who Jesus will be. Look at their response in verse 14. So they said, some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. It's the same thing that is happening today. Some people say Jesus was a good man. Some say he was a good prophet. Others say he was just another religious leader, another spiritual leader like Muhammad or Buddha. But most of the young people today, they, the, the, this generation that's grown up, they, they don't even believe that Jesus was or is God. Nothing has changed. This is exactly the same thing that they were saying back then. They're saying the same things today. Jesus is no different than any other prophet before or after him. So they answered, the disciples answered them, who, who, some say Jeremiah, other says the, the, one of the prophets. So Jesus probably thought it over in his mind a little bit and he was thinking, hmm, okay. Then he looked at them and he wanted to know their thoughts. He wanted them now to, to, to verbalize what they thought about him. So he drilled a little bit deeper and he said, whom do you say? that I am. <coughs> Excuse me. Jesus is asking you the same question this morning. I know that others are saying that I'm a good man. I know that others say that I'm a good spiritual leader. Others are saying that I was a great prophet. But verse 15, but who do you say that I am? This is where the rubber meets the road, so they say. Whom do you say that I am? And that is the question that each and every one of us must answer. We must settle that question in our minds. We must settle it in our souls. We must settle it in our hearts. Before we can progress any farther with Jesus, before he can do any good work for us, before he can perform any miracles on our behalf or in our life, we must, we must answer the question, who is Jesus? Jesus knew all things, but they, his disciples, needed to know for themselves. They needed to know, they needed to, to, to confess that true belief. It is very, very important to confess your beliefs. Look at Romans chapter 10, verse 8 through 10. But what does it say? The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. You have to combine your faith with action. And in this case, the action is speaking it, verbalizing your beliefs. Jesus is Lord. <clears throat> it is not just enough to believe that Jesus exists 
or that there's a God up above. Look at what James said in, in James chapter 2, verse 19. You believe that God is one, you do well. Even the demons believe and shudder. James is saying it is not just enough to believe that there is a God, that God exists somewhere up in heaven, or that there is some higher power. You must believe that Jesus exists. You you must believe that he came to the earth as a baby, that he lived a sinless life, that he was the propitiation or the acceptable sacrifice for our sins, that he died on a tree, that he was dead and buried, and that on the third day he rose again, triumphant over sin, death, and the grave, alive forevermore, and that he is coming back for us. And if you believe these things with your heart and confess them with your mouth, that Jesus is Lord and Savior, you will be saved. Jesus is coming back to judge the quick and the dead. And all who have fallen asleep will be raised to life again. And if they believe, if they confess that truth, they will be given rewards. Those who have rejected Jesus, on the other hand, Jesus will raise those to life as well, but they will stand judged and then they will be sent to a lake of fire as eternal punishment. I cannot stress enough how important it is to find out who Jesus is. I want you to listen to me. It's not just enough to go to church every Sunday. It's not enough to shake the preacher's hand after the message. It's not enough just to live a good moral life, not hurting anyone, not stealing. All of those things are good in itself, but they do not save. You must have a relationship with Jesus. He is the only way, the only truth, the only life, and no one comes to the Father except through Him. He is that important. If you reject Jesus, you reject the one who sent him. Always, always remember that. If you reject Jesus, you reject life. Listen to this. This is what Jesus asked his disciples in verse 13 through 15. Who do men say that I, the son of man, am? So they said, some, some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, others Jeremiah, one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? In other words, Jesus was asking, what's the word on the street? What's, what's the word that's circulating? What, what, what's going on? What, what are they saying about who I am? What's the talk around the town? I want you to tell me, who do they, they believe that I am? And they answered him. Then he asked, okay, but now tell me, who do you say that I am? And here's the kicker. I want you to understand this. It was Peter and James and John and Matthew and all the other disciples. Remember, they were all a part of the in crowd. They were handpicked by Jesus himself. Yet, they still had to answer the question, Who do you believe that I am? By now, those disciples should have known who he was. This was the end of Jesus' ministry. They had been with him three and a half years already. They saw the miracles. They heard his teachings. They heard his proclamation. They knew who Jesus was. But still, they had to profess the answer. They had to answer who Jesus was. They had settled that question. Just because you grew up in church and you never missed Sunday school, or you grew up in youth meetings and you never missed a Wednesday night, those things are all good, but they don't qualify you or they don't excuse you from answering the question, whom do men say that I am? And more importantly, 
Who do you say that I am? See, your father might have been a preacher. Your mom may have been a worship leader. Your family for generations may have been ministers of the gospel. You yourself might have been a Christian all your life. But you still have to answer the question, who do you say that I am? You still got to profess who Jesus is. The scriptures, Matthew chapter 22, verse 14 say, For many are called, but few are chosen. If you can't believe the basic truth of the gospel, you cannot be a part of the chosen group. Many are called, but few are chosen. There's no free tickets in. Everyone must make that choice. Everyone must answer that question. Who is Jesus? Here's the thing. John chapter um, 3, verse 16 and 17 says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. God sent Jesus as a propitiation for our sins. The ultimate sacrifice. Now this word propitiation means the act of gaining or regaining the favor or goodwill of someone or something. In other words, Jesus became the appeasement or the fulfillment of the law when he died on the tree for our sins that we might regain favor and goodwill with God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But catch 22 is, we have to believe and accept the sacrifice that Jesus made on the tree. We have to believe that he's the son of God, that he came to the earth, lived a sinful life, perished on the tree by his own will. No one took his life from him. He laid it down and he had the power to pick it up again. So on the third day, he picked it up. And now he's alive forevermore and he's coming back to get us. We have to believe that we can't get away. That is the basic foundation of the Christian beliefs. There's no other religion like it. Jesus died for our sins in our place. So who do you say that Jesus, the son of God is? Is Jesus your propitiation today? Is he your only way into eternal life? Remember Jesus said that if anyone enters the sheep pen by any other way, he's a thief. You cannot enter any other way. If you try to enter some other way, you will be cast out. The only way to eternal life is through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. You have to accept that, accept his free gift of life. You cannot find any other way in. Jesus is the only way to God. It is only the belief in them that can save your immortal soul. So do you know Jesus as Lord and Savior? Do you know him personally? As your savior, do you confess that he's God? Well, if you haven't, and you would like to, here's what you do. Pray this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, forgive me of my sins. I believe that Jesus is God. I believe that he died on the tree for my sins. I believe that he was raised to life again on the third day. I believe he's coming back for me. Accept me now. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for coming back for me. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, and you believe with your heart that Jesus did forgive you. He has. Now what you got to do is you start going to start living 
the right life. You just can't keep on living the way that you used to live. You have to put those things aside and you have to live a good life, a righteous life, according to what Jesus taught in the gospel. So you got to get a Bible. You got to begin to read the gospels. You got to begin to live by what is taught there in the scriptures. You got to love. Join a church, a Bible believing church, not one of those progressive churches that embraces the things of the world and, and teaches that you can live any old way and that, that, that God would overlook because God will never send anybody to hell. And it's true, he'll, he won't send people to hell. You have to choose to go there yourself. And you choose to go there by rejecting Jesus. So if you reject Jesus, you choose to go there. So join one of those Bible-believing churches that believe there's a right way to live and disciples their, their people. So be discipled in that church. And when Jesus comes back, he'll find you doing what it is that you should be doing. And he'll take you to be with him. That where he is, you'll be forever and ever and ever. What a great and awesome thought that is. Well, again, I want to say thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate everyone who, who tunes in uh, every week and who go onto our website and, and looks through. I, we appreciate you so much. My name is Kenny Yates. This is Hold the Hope. Be blessed and stay blessed.